Welcome back to another session of Demo Mondays. Demo Mondays is video series published on Mondays where I invite creators and founders of different Amazon seller softwares and uh, I ask them to present their products just like this on the screen. And today my guest is Data Hawk. And Data Hawk is presented by the co-founder Otman. Hello, Otman. Hi, Augustas. Thanks for having me. Nice to meet you here. So please uh, tell us what Data Hawk is and what uh, problems do you solve for Amazon sellers? Yeah, absolutely. So Data Hawk is an Amazon Analytics tool for Amazon sellers, vendors, uh, brands, and consultants. And what we do is that we help them solve three main problems. Um, the first one is helping them with product sourcing, so helping them figure out what product to sell. The second one is helping them understand the market in which they're selling, so understanding their competition, going really deep there, understanding how they should be pricing their products, and so on. And the third component that's most important to us and that's been our focus so far is helping them with tracking the performance of their products. So that encompasses things such as tracking the best sellers rank, the keyword rankings, um, and other metrics for their products and for the competition as well. No, oh, that's great. And you mentioned that uh, you are targeting also consultants, agencies, and vendors. So can you talk more about target users of your software? Yeah, absolutely. So I think the spectrum is very broad. Um, we have customers that aren't selling yet, that are contemplating starting selling on Amazon through FBA. Um, as you know, there are more than 2 million sellers, so it's really a, a very big market. And then on the other very end of the spectrum, we have uh, some of our customers, our top 50 global Amazon sellers that are making north of 50 million in revenues a year. So I think it's a really broad customer base. On the, on, the, on the consultant side, we have some um, agencies, for instance, that work for uh, global brands. And those are people who manage uh, different accounts and they use our tool. Uh, we also have uh, private equity firms. So yeah, it's really a broad spectrum of, of customers. And basically also private label uh, sellers as well as uh, online arbitrage sellers can use it, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's both. It's sellers. It's uh, people who have their own brand registered in the brand registry program and so on. And it's vendors. So no, no limits in uh, as to uh, who can be using the tool. And very important information for international sellers. What uh, marketplaces are you covering at the moment? Yeah, great question. So we, uh, we cover all Amazon marketplaces worldwide. So except for China and Japan. Uh, which means that we are in the US, in Mexico, in Brazil, in all European markets, uh, in India, and in Australia. Now oh, you are quite keeping up with the uh, Amazon's <laughs> <laughs> marketplaces everywhere. And uh, I think we are ready to check your tool inside. How does it look and how does it work? So let's do it. All right. So um, with regards to how the tool works, um, one of the key things that we uh, try to do is making it easy for our users to organize the way they work. And we do that through uh, one feature that we call projects. Um, and what I, here, as you can see, I'm in, uh, I'm in the account. As I log in in my account, I can uh, find the list of projects that I have created. And so project is basically a way for you to organize the way you work in DataHawk. It can be um, it can be a specific brand, for instance, that you're selling. It can be a product category. Um, and each pro uh, project is tied to a marketplace. So, for instance, here, Kanzec is a brand that's focused around leather goods. And you can see that I've created here a project around it that's fo focused on the United States. So, um, let me dive into the first feature that I told you about, um, which is uh, our product tracker. Um, so now I'm looking at the at the dashboard of this project that I'm uh, that I've just shown you, and here what you can see is a list of the major product metric changes that have occurred um, in the past 24 hours uh, and in the past seven days. So, for instance, um, amongst my the products that I'm tracking, you can see that this one 
has had a huge um, raise in its bestsellers rank. It went from 187K to 30 in one day. You can see changes in price, in reviews, and so on. And if you wish, you can go into more details and compare the major changes that have occurred uh, in two specific dates. So um, moving on to actually the core of how this works, it works in two main ways. So first, you need to track products that you're interested in tracking, obviously. So as I move on to this page here called products that you see, um, you can see a list of all the products that I'm tracking. So here, there are around 226 products that I'm tracking in this project. You can actually filter through them by price, by rating, by number of reviews, or even by entering uh, the name, uh, I mean a, a keyword in the title or, or the seller name or any other information. We also give some high level information here, such as the number of sellers that are competing in the buy box for each product, its price, its rating, its number of reviews, its current BSR, its estimated sales figures in dollar terms and in, term, and in units, um, its related fees as well, and the margin you can expect um, from each um, product. Um, other high-level information you see here is who's winning the buy box. You can see that this is an FBA product, so it's prime. Um, and um, yeah, so this is, uh, this is the way it's presented. Um, now, let's say that, for instance, you're interested in diving into more details in this product from the brand called Polare. So it's a full grain leather messenger bag. Um, once you click there, what you can see is a nice interface in which we present um, the history in product metrics related to this uh, product. So you can see changes in its number of reviews over time. You can see that it's been increasing by 4% since last week. You can see the change in its rating, bestseller rank, buy box price, um, what we call buy box available quantity, which is basically the quantity you can pick when uh, you want to buy a product, and um, a range regarding the estimated monthly sales velocity for each product. Now, if you want to dive into more details, you can move on to uh, the second tab here called BSR Tracker. And here you can see really, um, in more details how the BSR has been changing. And actually, it's not showing up in this uh, product specifically, but we can track up to four BSR categories here. So it gets interesting if you want to see how you're doing, for instance, in the briefcase category as compared to the, let's say, um, global apparel um, and clothing uh, category. Moving on to the third tab called Keyword Tracker. Here, basically, what you can see is the is the changes in the, in the keyword rankings related to this product. And the way we do that, and this is super important to emphasize on, is on DataHawk, you don't need to tie a specific product to specific keywords. We do that manually. Um, what I mean by that is that the keywords that are showing up here for instance, 66, you see 66 indexing keywords. So those are all the keywords that I've tracked within my project and which our tool has automatically um, uh, found to be ranking for this uh, product, right? Um, so what you can see here is a clear history of how it's been doing over time. So you can see that for 17 inch leather briefcase, for instance, as of the 25th of September, it's ranked in page one, uh, position one. You can see the monthly search volume related to each keyword. You can see um, um, the seven days average, the seven days change, and so on, with some awesome color signals here that you can see, which help you figure out overall trends. So the greener, the better. Here, green means page one. Here, red means page nine. Um, and what's interesting, actually, for every seller, I assume, is when you go to those uh, metrics and you can see that all of a sudden you went from page six, position 235, to page one, position 16 for this keyword. And what this can help our sellers is tell them that, well, probably they've had a sell uh, that came from this keyword, or probably they've done a change in the backend interface in the keywords that they're using, which made them rank better for this, um, for this product. Um, and here you can get a nice chart as, as well that helps you uh, 
uh, show the, um, the, the rankings that you have here on the table, but show them as a chart. So as you can see, I can pick the ones I'm most interested in seeing. And it's pretty cool because it helps with getting overall trends. Um, now, the fourth thing that we give with regards to product is a keyword generator. And our keyword generator is a tool that looks, that runs a semantic analysis on the description of the product, its title, its bullet points, and other competing products, and figures out um, a list of related keywords that you could use either to improve your SEO performance for that product or to use for your PPC campaigns and so on. So interestingly for this one, for instance, and as a reminder, it's a full grain leather messenger bag. So our engine figured out that a keyword, related keyword could be cross body leather bags for women, for instance, or leather bag, leather bags, or leather bag satchel and so on. So you can see what it's related to. You can see uh, the best department that it's related to. So for instance, for this one, we suggested home and kitchen. So you know that it's not a relevant one. For this one, you can see it's related to handbags. So you know it's a, a better suggestion. You can also filter by search volume and by CPC, estimated CPC. Um, now, should you be more interested in um, digging deeper into uh, any keyword of those, you could track it. And I'll show you later on what kind of information you can get when you track a keyword. Um, now, moving on to the fifth tab called on-page SEO, um, what this is, is um, a tool that looks um, at the product description and analyzes it. So what you can see here is a cloud of the most used words in this product's description. So for instance, leather has been used six times in its description. You can see the number of characters in its title, the number of words, and so on. You can see also something super interesting here is change history. So for instance, this is the title that the product has as of the 25th of September. Now, if the seller were to change the product's title at some point in time, we would track this here and show you the change that occurred. And we do the same for the description. And here it's super helpful here. For instance, as you can see, on the 9th of August, there's been some changes here. And we show you in green and red what's been uh, dismissed, what's been added, and so on. So that can be super, super helpful. We do the and, same for body, body. And this information can be tracked by, for any kind of ASIN, also competitor ASIN? Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. So this is really open. It's not, uh, so far as I've shown you, we don't connect to the seller account at all. This is all done by our technology without connecting to the seller account. So you can do this for your computers. Absolutely. And I think this is where our tool comes most handy. It's basically helping you with not only tracking your own product's performance, but helping you benchmarking your performance against that of the, your computers. And now the very last tab here called actions log is one that's super interesting for um, other data-driven people that want to track, let's say, um, what the effect of their daily uh, actions have on the performance that they have. So for instance, Augustas, assume that you were selling this product and that you uh, run an advertisement campaign on Facebook, for instance. Now, what most people do is that they just forget about this and don't draw correlations between what they do outside of Amazon and the impact this has within Amazon. So by using our actions log, you can add entries where you can tell that, for instance, you've run an advertising and marketing action on Facebook, for instance, on, um, and you started it on the 18th of September, maybe, and, um, and finished it on the 25th, right? So you can add any details you want about it. You can add the goals that you have on mind. You can add the learnings that you've had extracted afterwards and so on and hit save. And once you do that, it's going to appear here. So when you figure out, for instance, a huge change in your BSR or any of other performance that you have, you can go back to your actions log and try to figure out what it is that you've done that helps you uh, reach this, this new performance. Now, the other thing that's interesting is that um, 
and we we value the the importance of data ownership so which is why the the other interesting thing that we decided to do is allow our users to export their data to excel and play around with it because for instance you want to draw correlations between um the sales you're doing and the impact they're having on your seo performance or your bsr and so on so you can export your product data to excel as you can see and get a very nice report on excel where you can see here it's a printable uh it's a yeah print ready um report that you can see with uh, an overall view of the the rankings that you've had so for instance for one product that i'm showing you here um at at some specific point in time it had 66 keywords for which it has ranked um but now it's only ranking for 21 uh, pro, uh, keywords so you can know that um, there's something off that maybe has occurred in between and that prompted this change. You can get a high level view of other keywords, performance and so on, the top 10 tracked keywords, for instance, and so on. Um, here you can go into much more details uh, in the second tab called keyword ranking. So you get basically what you get in the app here in the keyword tracker tab, but in much, much more detail. So for instance, um for for let's take this keyword for instance 15 inch leather briefcase and i'm gonna highlight it in yellow so you can know that currently the product that i'm showing you here isn't ranking for this keyword but interestingly it's been ranking for it on the 29th of june actually and the rank it had at the time was 64 and that's the best ranking actually it had for it so what this helps you to do is go to the 29th of Ju June and try to understand what it is that you were doing back then that made it possible for you to, uh, to rank for, for this keyword. So that could be, for instance, running PPC campaigns focused on this keyword, or maybe uh, having a lower sale point, or maybe a higher sales velocity and so on. And this is the kind of really super helpful data that, that we try to, to, to give to our users. And you can also track other changes here, such as changing its price, rating, um, uh, answered questions, estimated monthly sales, who was holding the buy box, and so on. Is there any question you have um, on, on this so far? Yes, on the BSR track, I see it was uh, information about the last 30 days. Is it possible to change to any um, period? So here on the app, we show the seven days average. And of course, on top of that, you can see it on a daily basis. And naturally, when you export that to Excel, you can pick whichever date you want. So because here you have for each date, you have the corresponding, um, you have the corresponding BSR that you see here, and you can see the category it's related to. So if you want, you can pick whichever average that you, uh, that you want. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, moving on to the second component that's super important in our tracker tool, the keywords component. As you recall, I've shown you how this product is ranking for a certain number of keywords, but what I haven't shown you is what our tool looks like on the keyword side, right? So, moving on to the keyword side, what you can see here is a list of all the keywords that I'm tracking within this project. So. Stuff such as leather strap replacement, small leather briefcase, modern leather briefcase, and so on. As you recall, this is a project that I made um, around a specific brand that's selling leather goods. So uh, what I decided to do is organize everything in such a way this is about leather goods. Another way you could have done it is create a project maybe for leather portfolios, another one for leather messenger bags, and so on, and be really more precise about this. So in any case, this is a list of keywords that I'm tracking within, within my project. So 194 one, you can get some high level information about their, um, the number of products that are ranking for each keyword. And what I mean by number of products that are ranking for each keyword, I mean the ones that appear on the browsable search results on Amazon. So if you were to type small leather briefcase on Amazon, there's gonna be a specific number of pages that you can browse through. Usually it's between seven to 20, but 20 is usually the maximum. 
And on average, it's going to be around 20 products per page, depending on the layout that you get. And so here we show you the number of products that are ranking in those browsable search pages. Um, you can see the median price related to each keyword. What I mean by that is, on average, if you look at all the products that are ranking for each keyword, what's their median price? And this is an answer that we can give. And we give it in much more details, I'll show you how. We also give median rating here, the median number of reviews, and the search volume related to each keyword. Now, the search volume is a data that we fetch from Google. Um, and we think it's a very good proxy in telling you uh, what uh, that would look like you know, on, on Amazon. Uh, one metric I didn't talk about that we have in the product side, but as well as on the keyword side, is the score that you see here. And this score is basically an attempt from us to try to gauge to which degree we deem a keyword to be competitive or a product to be competitive. So, for instance, we deem the small letter briefcase keyword to be super competitive. Why? The reason is the number of reviews that the products that are ranking for it have. It's probably a super high number of reviews, so it's going to be hard for you to um, to penetrate that market, and also the rating. On average, um, those products that are ranking for it have really, really good rating. So you need to really be killing it in terms of product quality to, to rank there. Um, so again, you can filter by price, rating, number of views, search volume, and so on across all the, the keywords that, that you have here. One thing that I didn't mention is that you can uh, filter by tags. And tags, tags are a cool thing that we built uh, to allow you to, uh, again, go deeper in how you organize your, your project, because you are able to assign labels or tags to each of those keywords. So for instance, have, if let's say that I want to show only the keywords I'm tracking that are related to portfolios. So here they are. I've tagged them with the portfolio uh, label. I've actually even tagged some with 15 inch, for instance or with stuff such as low volume, low competition, and so on. The way you can do that is pretty simple. You click on the drop down, manage tags, and you can uh, pick the tags that you want. So that's super helpful, basically, in um, allowing you to, uh, yeah, allowing you to, uh, to, to get better organized using, using our tool. Now, let's say that you're interested in um, maybe selling a, a zippered leather portfolio here. This is a super interesting keyword. Super high volume, 1,000 monthly search queries. And uh, yeah, it looks a good, like a good one, although it's super competitive. So as I clicked on the keyword, what you can see here is four main tabs. All products, reverse ranking, market analysis, and keyword generator. Now on the first tab in which we're currently at, called all products, you can see the list of all the products that are ranking for this keyword if you were to type zippered leather portfolio on Amazon at the time at which we fetch this information. So typically here, there are 272 products that are ranking for this keyword. You can see um, what those products are. Here you can see their rank. So the little figure is the page. The larger one is the overall position. So this one is ranked page one, position one, page one, position two, and so on. Again, we give uh, information about uh, our scoring for the product, the number of sellers that are on the buy box, its rating, number of views, price, estimated monthly sales figure, and estimated potential margin. Um, now, whenever you see a question mark here, the reason is that the product isn't tracked. So in order for us to unveil those metrics, there's a need for you to track each product, right? And for instance, those ones are actually being tracked, so you can unveil the information. You see they have only one seller, so this is a private label brand for sure. You can see their estimated monthly sales and so on. Now, um, something that can be super helpful in terms of helping you with understanding your market, and it's something I was uh, saying early on during our call when we uh, when I mentioned the kind of needs and problems that we solve. Now, let's suppose that you were launching a leather portfolio and that you were hesitating as to what kind of pricing you want to have and so on. Maybe you were going for a pricing above $100, right? So what you can do if your goal is actually to rank for zippered leather portfolio is go here, 
filter the price to above 99. And what happens is that almost instantly, we can show you what are the products that are ranking for this keyword um, that correspond to the filtering criteria that you've selected here. So there are 45 results out of 272, around 17% of the products that are ranking for this keyword that are priced above 99. Now, what's interesting is how they're distributed across different pages. And as you scroll down, you can see the detailed ranking that each of those ones have. Now, again, you can go much deeper. Maybe you wanna see only those that have more than 30 reviews. So you can filter by that as well. It shows you that only 1% of the products that are ranking for this keyword are priced above 99 and have more than 31 reviews. So again, that can get super interesting in helping you drive in your pricing strategy, your product launch strategy, and so on. And Otman, could you explain the scoring? How many levels do you have? I see there is from A to D, but A has plus and no plus and minus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, for each letter, we have four letters. So A through D. Yeah, that's four. Um, and for each letter, you have three. Uh, you have three scores. You have uh, sorry, two scores. You have minus and the normal letter. So A would be better than A minus, for instance, and A minus would be better than B, and so on. And for instance, if you look at this product, if you're curious as to why it has A. Well, we, it has a super great rating, right? It has 4.7, while interestingly, the average rating for the products that are ranking for this keyword is 4.37, so it's much higher. <clears throat> it also has a very good review score. Of course, it has 107 reviews, so super great. The pricing, though, is not as good. It has a pricing score of only 51%. The reason is simply because its price, as you've seen, is much higher than that of the competition. On average, competing product here are priced at 53. And that's why. I thought I saw A plus score. Um, yeah, probably on the, on the first page that we've seen, let me reset this. And yeah, so A plus would be the top level. A plus, then A, then A minus, then B plus, B, B minus, and so on. Though it's super rare to have A plus products, as you see, most of those are really on page one and are killing it in terms of um, performance. 500 reviews, 900 reviews, as you can see, really good performance. All right, and how do you add keyword? Super great question, yeah. So I haven't been tackling that yet, but the way you add keywords or product, it, there are two ways of doing it. So either you go to the keyword section, for instance, that you see here, and you click on the button on the upper right side of your screen called Add New Keywords to Track. And as you click on it, you can enter the keywords you're interested in, right? So leather briefcase, for instance, and so on. So one keyword per line or using commas, <clears throat> and then hit Save. And what happens is that after a few seconds to a few minutes, um, the data related to each keyword will be fetched and you'd be able to browse through it. Um, so the same for products. If you go to the product section, you click on add new products to track, and then you just paste your zines here. Now, one interesting thing that we do is, let's assume that you're selling a leather bag that has three different colors, black, blue, and brown. Now, you can either add each azine individually, or you can enter only one child azine, or maybe the parent azine and tick the box here where you select to uh, decide to um, have us automatically track all associated as ins and then pass one of those and hit save. And so what we would do as um, we do that, as you do that, is that we'll basically go and fetch the data related to all the child as ins and show it to you in the following way. So you have the parent as in that you can see here and you can see a label calling it parent and underneath you can see the child as -ins. And one super cool feature that we have is that <clears throat> as you're tracking your keyword performance, we show you actually whichever the child in which you're looking, whichever the child as in in which you're looking, we're telling you which one is actually ranking for the keyword. So for instance, here 
you can see that for luxury leather messenger bag on the 21st of September, actually it wasn't this variation that was ranking for this keyword, but it was another variation of the same parent as in. And you can see it here. And the difference is told through the color signals. When the background is filled, you can know that it's this very same um, variation that's ranking. When it's not, <laughs> you can know that it's a different variation. And the final way of doing it, of adding a keyword or as in, is through the quick actions button that you can see here. So as you click on it, you can click on either add keywords to track, add products to track, and basically do the same approach, whichever the place in which you're browsing inside our app. Um, now, so I'm going to go back to the example we were looking at. I think it was zippered leather portfolio here. So we've discussed the products that are ranking for it. Now, let's assume that you want to have um, a less detailed analysis of the market, although it's super detailed and you'll see how. You can move on to the third tab here called market analysis and get the following information. So here on a global basis, we tell you that for instance, all the 272 products that are ranking in the browsable search results for this keyword on a median basis are priced at $31.99. On a median basis, they have 13 reviews. On an average basis, they have 68 reviews. And we go actually much deeper because at the end of the day, what's important to you is ranking at page one. So we allow you to answer the same question on a page by page level. So if you were to try to rank at page one, well, you know that you probably want to have around 200 reviews. Otherwise, your odds of being there are super low because on a median basis, products that are ranking on page one for this keyword have 164 reviews. If you go to page two, it's gonna be easier. See, page two, five reviews on average, not that hard. But page one, super tough. Uh, and we tell you the same for pricing, right? Uh, let's say that you wanted to price your product at $200. Well, by looking at this, you can see, and actually this is how we, this is our approach to cracking the, the A9 Amazon ranking algorithm. It, we, it's through this kind of insights that we give you. We know, you know here that for instance, if you were to price your product at $200, well, the odds of you ranking at page one are, yeah, non-existing because the maximum, the top price product on page one um, is priced at $135. On, and on average, the price is actually 61. So you can see that it's super complicated. And here, if, you're, if you want to see this information visually, we give you three matrices in which you can see, for instance, here on the x-axis, the price, and on the y-axis, the position for this keyword, right? And so as you hone in at a specific price, so let's see, for instance, here, you can see exactly which product it is, how much it's priced, the position, and so on. And what's interesting is the concentration that you see here, right? So um, let's say that you want to see only those that are below position 50, basically you would be looking below this line. And the concentration of the products that are below this line is rather here than here, right? Despite a few exceptions, it's more around here. And actually the top ones are actually here, right? It's around 30. So you can know that the sweet spot here, if you want to rank at top positions is probably at this price point. And now that can help you drive your product sourcing strategy, your positioning and so on, depending on the kind of pri private label brand that you want to launch, for instance, or the product that you want to be selling there. And again, we give the same information for rating versus position, number of reviews versus positions and so on. One question, what does it mean average and medium? I mean, for me, it's the same. So the average would be just the mean. So you would take um, you would take the, the the average price of of all the products, while the median would rather look at the distribution and how fifty percent of the products are actually below the price point and fifty percent are underneath it. So, for instance, here thirty one point fifty four is the median price. So that tells you that fifty percent of the products 
are above 31.54 and 50% are underneath it. So it's um, a better way for you to actually look at averages because if you look at just averages, of course, data can be off uh, because if you have a product that's selling at 10 million, uh, for instance, um, while all the other ones are selling below 100, well, it's gonna drive your average at insane levels. Well, if you look at the median, it will avoid you from getting into that uh, analysis mistake. So do you suggest to look more at the median block? We suggest for people to look at both for sure. Uh, but then again, uh, you have the global look here in which you can see the maximum mm -hmm. price. So you can know if there's anything off, if there are some sellers playing with the algorithm by pushing it through, um, I don't know what kind of black hat techniques they might be using. Um, but yeah, I think it's definitely helpful to look at both. And actually, as you can see, we give the minimum, the maximum, the top percentile, the lowest percentile, the median, and the average. Yeah, very interesting. Um, now, moving on to the two other tabs that we haven't tapped on here. Uh, again, we have a keyword generator that basically looks at the, all the products that are ranking for this keyword and suggests you a list of other keywords that you may be interested in that are related to it. So for instance, zippered leather portfolio for men, zippered leather portfolio organizer, zipper leather pad folio, zipper leather binder, and so on. So as you can see, it can be really super, super detailed. And the list is really super good, super large, sorry. So it's around 200, up to 250 keywords, I think. And again, you can track the ones you're interested in. You can also add new keywords from here if, you, if you've if you had uh, an idea, for instance, and just enter it here and hit save. You can also compose your own keywords based on a few words that we show you here. So for instance, uh, maybe slim, um, iPad, tablet, portfolio, and then click on track it and we'll start tracking it. Um, and finally, the other tab here called reverse ranking um, basically just shows you um, the products that you're tracking within your project and how they're ranked for this keyword in a very summarized way. So that can be super helpful to, to you as well if you're curious as to how um, they are doing. So for instance, for this one, you can see how it's been doing. And you can decide on, yeah, you can look at that for any product that you're, you're currently tracking. Any and, questions? Yeah, and in the last graph you s revealed, mm -hmm. there, there was a gap. Uh, why? Yeah, there yeah, are gaps. So, great question. That happens very often. So essentially what it means is that the product has fallen out of the rankings, right? So it was ranked at position 17 here, and then position 14. So essentially, a lot of possibilities there. Either, for instance, the product went out of inventory, and so if it went out of out of stock, it it wouldn't be showing in the in the search results, right? Um, or, for instance, um, it's been closed by Amazon uh, temporarily, or uh, so anything related to that, basically, or it just has had a sudden maybe raise in the ranks and then it fell out of ranks, or maybe uh, the seller has stopped using a keyword that really helped with the, driving the rankings there. So he, he took it off um, from the title or from, uh, or from the description and so on. Um, so it really depends, but usually it's related to the inventory. And this graph was dropping, there was an animation. Is it just an animation or it is also showing to us some information? No, no, it's, it's an animation. It's basically as you click on the drop down, it loads up. Okay. All right, so um, yeah, I think with that, with that we've covered the, uh, all the aspects related to the related to our our tracker. And again, there are a lot of information here that you can export to uh, Excel. I've shown you only one, but um, here a second one, for instance, would be this. This is, for instance, uh, the export of keyword uh, of uh, the the results related to a keyword uh, leather strap. You can see all the products that I've shown you in the in the L products tab here. So we have lots of exports. We also allow um, our larger sellers um, to uh, use our API. So some of the, them are very sophisticated and want to use more advanced tools to fetch the, the data from us. 
uh, so we have an API that basically allows them to to do this as well. And how do you export? So you have three or four different type of exports, right? Um, the first one uh, is the product export. So when you're in a looking at a product, you can click on here, the button here, export product data, and you'll get one of the exports that I've shown you, which is this one. Mm -hmm. that's, my, that's super detailed around the product. The second export that you have um, is the project export. Now, with the project export, you basically export all the data related to all the keywords and all the products that are in your project within a single CSV um, file. So you can do it from the quick actions menu that you see here by clicking on export project data. And the other export that you have is on the keywords. So for instance, let's say that you're looking at the leather strap keyword here on the results that you get from the products that are ranking for it. You can click on this little text here, export list, and you'd get the list of all those keywords. So different ways of doing it. If you want your whole account export, we do have that as well. If you have you want just a project export, we have it as well. If you want the keyword or the product, we have it as well. Perfect, thank you. Uh, yeah, so I think that with that, we've, uh, we've covered the tracker aspect of our software. Now, the last two co components are more related, um, yeah, focused towards uh, new sellers and upcoming sellers that are in the uh, product uh, sourcing phase. And we help them through two ways. So. The first one is a little tool called product research tool here that you can see, which allows them to browse through our database of currently around three million and a half products and it's growing a lot daily. Um, and we do that in a very simplistic way as I'll show you. Um, so here you can pick across different uh, Amazon browse nodes or categories. So for instance, let's say that you want to um, launch um, yeah, maybe something in the clothing category priced at between $29 and $34. And maybe you want to see only the products that are in the clothing, shoes, and jewelry category priced between $29 and $34, but that have between 100 and 150 reviews. And maybe um, a rating be above 4.5. So it tells you that there are nine products that correspond to this very precise criteria that you've seen here in our database. And once you hone in um, to, uh, to, to, to uh, those criteria, you can launch the search. And after a few seconds, you basically get the results that are corresponding to your criteria. So here, for instance, you can see uh, there's, what's this? A toiletry bag for men and women. 135 reviews, 4.7 rating, $32. Um, and if you want to unveil more data related to it, you can click on track it here. And once you click on track it, it's going to show up on a dedicated project that you can create. Usually the default name uh, that we suggest for it is product research. And basically what you can do afterwards is uh, what I've shown you earlier. So deep in, uh, go much deeper and dig deeper in terms of uh, tracked information that you have uh, around a, a product. Um, now, the other way that we, uh, we help with the product sourcing is a very cool feature that we have called the BSR browser. And our BSR browser tool allows you to uh, browse through um, up to three browse nodes, up to three uh, detailed Amazon categories uh, to show the top 100 products on each of those. So, for instance, let's say that you're interested in the clothing, shoes, and jewelry category. We go there. Then you can see all the um, sub-departments or sub-categories that are related to it. So, baby, boys, costumes and accessories, girls, <laughs> luggage and travel gear, men, women, um, and so on. And so it's loading. All right, here it is. And so what you see here is the list of all the top 100 or so 
products that are in the clothing, shoes, and jewelry category. So this one, it's recalled repeal, windproof travel umbrella. You can see the number of reviews it has, its price, its rating, and so on. And again, if you want to track this in more details, you can click on the track it button here. You can see there are some products from Haynes brand here, from Wrangler, and so on. And this table doesn't have a score information. Why is it so? Because none of those products are currently being tracked. As you can see, you don't have information around sellers nor sales uh, as well. The reason is that uh, we can't go and fetch the information for the entire database because that's just massive volumes. Uh, so we do it on demand. And the way we do it is through the tracking uh, um, component of our of our tool, which is basically saying using credits towards invading this sort of data that we actually track on a daily basis. So if you were to uh, track this, you'd get the information and you'd get the monitoring on a daily basis. And now again, you can go uh, to a, a subcategory. For instance, we went to the shoe, jewelry, and watch accessories. So as you can see, we're in up to uh, three nodes now. Um, and you can see the products that are ranking for it. All right. Um, all right. Yeah, so I think that with that, I've covered all the current existing features of DataHawk as of September 2018. Um, um, so there are a lot of other exciting stuff that we're working on. Happy to tell you a, a bit more about that. Ah, before we go into the future features, can you, shall we cover the pricing of your software? Yeah, sure, absolutely. So our pricing fun functions as follows. We have, uh, we have a free tier, so um, we have a freemium approach. Um, of course, so it's a bit more basic, but uh, um, it's really helpful to smart sellers that are just starting out there and want to have some basic information. Um, so we allow them to track up to five keywords, up to three as-ins, and get a, an insight into some of the other features that I've shown you with a much uh, more limited way. And then uh, the rest of our pricing starts at $19 per month paid monthly, up to $99 per month uh, paid monthly. And basically, the differences between all those pricing tiers is the, um, the number of keywords that you can track, the number of products that you can track, and some of the other features that I've shown you around market analysis, for instance, inveiling keyword search volume data and so on. Thank you very much. A lot of uh, data about, uh, I like that you don't need to connect your Amazon seller information. So it's not, not uh, implemented at the moment. And do you have any plans to integrate uh, Seller Central? Yeah, so absolutely we do, because one of the things that many of our customers have been asking to is allowing them to track their um, their real sales data and so on. Um, so it's something that we're working on. We'll be launching it within the next 30 days, most probably. And I think it's super interesting because when you, you're able to draw correlations between your SEO performance and your real sales and traffic data, it's at that very specific point that you really, truly leverage the power of uh, data and insights that we give. And what other features are you planning to release to your customers? Yeah, so we're working on other stuff such as allowing them to track, uh, for instance, which computers are uh, competing on the buy box against them. I think this is helpful to sellers more than private label brands that are brand registered. Um, we're also working on improving our reporting capabilities um, adding uh, an alerting system, so allowing you to uh, track, for instance, when you get a negative review, when you have uh, uh, a sudden change or spike in terms of uh, um, in terms of your BSR and so on. And also, one of the things that we're very excited about is uh, launching more AI-oriented um, capabilities that um, basically would allow you to uh, get some really practical and um, recommendations around what you should do. So for instance, telling you, hey, you should price your product at this price range and you should push uh, your sales to uh, um, a sales velocity of 
10 daily sales and so on if you want to hit page uh, position one for this keyword and so on. Yeah, sounds like a virtual assistant. Exactly. <laughs> That's cool. All right. And uh, how do we contact support of Data Hawk? Yeah, so that's uh, super simple. We have a chat app that you can see when you're uh, browsing through our website or you're in the app. And I think it's really the best way of contacting us. We're super reactive there. Uh, so it's in the bottom right side of the screen. Uh, by clicking on it, not only can you get access to uh, uh, some our knowledge base with articles that can help you uh, answer your, uh, your, your questions, but you can also... Um, just send us whichever query that you have and we'll be very prompt to, uh, to reply. The other uh, way of doing it is naturally through uh, uh, sending us an email um, and that's through, uh, uh, through opening a support ticket. There's, there are links in our website and in the app as well in which you can click on contact us and fill uh, a form. And final question, do you have any offer for the Monday's viewers? Yeah, absolutely, we do. So, uh, yeah, we're excited to uh, give a 25% discount to all the Mo Mondays viewer that's eligible for uh, up to four months. Um, so, yeah, just as they sign in, uh, they should make sure that they ping us on the chat app again by telling us uh, Demo Mondays or we're from Demo Mondays and so on. And uh, we'd be happy to apply the, the discount. Perfect, Atman. Thank you very much and good luck in your business. Bye-bye. Thank you, Augustas.